Hi, welcome to Passionate Pursuit, where me, Rachel, and my husband, Eric, have conversations and interviews about the supernatural and how to walk in the promise of doing greater things. Thank you for joining us for part two of our conversation with Ian. So spiritual warfare is one of those things that we, um, we know we're supposed to be active in it. We, we go after things, but there's all these warnings out there. Like some people are Mm. like, Oh, don't, don't do it at all. Right. And then there's the, the gradations of it. And people talk about not coming against strongholds or not coming against, uh, principalities or things like that. But it, it sounds like, it sounds like it's pretty open territory in that sense in your perspective just follow god in it and watch him fall <laughs> i don't know do you have any yeah, any, yeah, any more yeah. thoughts on that especially coming from that area where it was uh, demons uh, over uh, so everything was, yeah yeah it, it was really interesting so um you know we found ourselves in a period of time where where uh you know it's really controversial uh outside of that country uh we didn't know we were completely ignorant we, we were just in the midst of it all <laughs> doing the warfare you know and uh not not realizing that this this was controversial um but you know one of the things oh i can't shout without revealing too much about the place uh but what's what's interesting is that uh you know this particular place um uh, the religion that they have now isn't actually the uh, the native religion. Right. Uh, it's actually yeah. it was another religion that, that was actually the main dominant religion of that uh, of that country. Mm-hmm. And so when um, when these particular uh, you know when the the new religion uh, came along and it wanted to do uh, warfare, then what it did was uh, uh, so uh, one of the ladies, uh, one of the king's uh, wives of this particular place. Had a, had a dream, and in this dream, she saw the demon over this particular country, mm. and uh, and uh, and all the places of power uh, that were actually you know in there, and like there was the knee, there was the uh, the, the elbows, all different parts of this this demoness's body. Right. Um, and so what she decided to do was to place a, a temple at each one of those power points that she'd seen, uh, in order to suppress the demon of the original language of that country uh, and, you know, promote the new country. So they actually, they did spiritual mapping mm. of the uh, of the nation and then were strategic in terms of the temples that they placed in that nation as well. And so wow. when you look at the country now uh, and their main temples, uh, then, then they fit the map that this lady had seen. Wow. Um, so so you know i i know that you know spiritual mapping is like a controversial thing but but it's it's what this particular religion did all those centuries ago and uh and you know still that new religion is the dominant religion of that uh, of that country uh so so is it that simple it's an interesting thing is it that simple for us as christians to just get a spiritual map of the the lay of that religion that we're trying to um I guess com- combat maybe, and then like place churches right. in those key areas. Is it that simple? Wouldn't that be nice? It would be. <laughs> it really would be. I, th- I think the thing about it is, uh, like you know, it's God who gives the strategies, and, mm. and you know, it's God who, who reveals these things. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not saying that that that's necessarily what we should do, but. Um, but I, I think it's important to realize that there is there's a spiritual dimension to you know to what we do, mm-hmm. and uh, and you know to to be ignorant of that and and think it doesn't matter I think is not is not particularly wise. Yeah, uh, I think it's it's important to to ask God for a strategy, uh, and you know to go after that, yeah. uh, whatever it is that He shows us, you know, strategic places or whatever. Uh, they need to be the ones that He's revealed uh, and and going for. Uh, but you know why wouldn't why shouldn't he you know reveal strategies that that would uh, you know help right well and what did you guys do with when you had that revelation of how okay. this one religion took over the other what did you do with that revelation uh so uh <laughs> sorry that's really so no 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 so uh, what 
what was really interesting, uh, you know, for me anyway, was was that you know I found that you know people were targeting like the new religion in terms of, like spare, prayer and their their spiritual warfare in particular places, uh, and and these were like strategic places, you know, in the past or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but what was happening was that in those places where they were praying against the new religion, the old religion was actually coming through. Wow! And um, and so <laughs> so I think you know like we're better off like getting rid of them all. And, yes. uh, and just going for it. Uh, <laughs> what was interesting was that, you know, where we were located was the, the place that actually, uh, you know, had been identified as the heart of this particular demoness. Mm. Uh, so, you know, God knows knows that. And, uh, you know, like he was, you know, he's after the heart as well. So, right. you know, where we were was actually strategic. Uh, and, you know, he God knows what he's doing. So, uh, yeah. Wow. Have you seen? It, a, it would have been. Go ahead. Sorry, it would have been great to have had so many, like you know, uh, Christians and missionaries in that land that you could then be strategic about where you're gonna, you know, like plant your churches and where you're gonna do your stuff. But you know, there were so few people who who were willing to uh, to go to that place that yeah. that actually, you know, it was good that we had somebody in the heart. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, so uh, so you know that 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 was uh, you know a particular issue there. Mm. Uh, but yeah, have sorry, you, you were gonna say. Have you seen a big change there? I mean, I know that you probably haven't necessarily gone back, but have you heard stories of change or have you seen growth from your, or yeah, like growth from your time there from the people that you worked with or? Uh, so, so it's been interesting, uh, you know, since, since coming back, um, we, cause you, you do think, well, you know, like, you know, what, what's the fruit and, you know, what's the growth of, uh, of what you've done? Um, we've tried to keep in touch with uh, with people, and and um, you know, there's one couple who who weren't Christians when uh, when we were there, uh, but we had a lot spent a lot of time with. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, ended up uh, leaving the country uh, for a particular you know work related thing or whatever. And while they're at, they became uh, they became Christians. Wow! And uh, which was which was great. And so they contacted us and told us that. Uh, now we understand, you know, the things that you were talking about. Wow. Uh, they all make sense. So so you just think, well, you know, like you, you, you've got to trust God for the fruits. Uh, you know, you might not always see it. And and we we're just so grateful that, you know, this particular couple uh, were able to get in touch with us and, and feedback. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, so, so that, that that's encouraging. Uh, I think I think the thing is that you just you just have to be faithful to what he calls you to do. Uh, be obedient to it. Uh, you know, do it as soon as you can. <laughs> Don't delay, uh, and uh, you know, trust God for the results. Um, that's, I'd say, that's probably the uh, the key to the Christian life. Wow! Really, whatever He tells you to do, do it. <laughs> right, radical <laughs> obedience. <laughs> that's beautiful. Wow. Yeah. So I'm I'm assuming that because you're married and that you would share what you were seeing with your wife, even though you didn't have the language of the seer, or, 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 right? Is, is that something, what, was that weird to her? Did she just kind of look at you each time and go, okay, whatever. I don't know what to do with that. Like, how did that work? <laughs> so, uh, so that, that's been really, um, uh, it's been, been interesting. I th think she, she, um, uh, so she's got, got to the stage, um, where you know, like she just accepts it, and and that's fine, um, you know, and and so I can I can share stuff with her, and 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 that's, uh, you know, she's not phased by it, uh, which is which is uh, good, um, and you know, I, I hear her sometimes, you know, talking with other people about it, so obviously she thinks it's all right, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, so so it's nice that you know that that you know I'm not having to be weird on my own. <laughs> so like when you're and in that, this you know, country though and seeing these demons and all this crazy stuff or even like when you're dating and would see uh stuff at, at church and things like that at, would yeah. you sh i'm assuming you share it with her in some way shape or form did you just reframe it or did you be like yeah i saw this and she's like well what do you mean <laughs> like so uh you know i uh you know quite soon i, I um with the stuff that that i was i was thinking well you know um that it would be okay to share uh then then you know i would i would share those things with her um i suppose um you know th there's one part which is um so you know to say with somebody like angela can where it's it's really useful to share with her because she's given me advice and helping me uh mm -hmm. you know to process the stuff and work it through 
Uh, whereas, you know, with with uh, Mandy, my wife, it, it's it would be more of a, you know, I'm just sharing this with you for information or yeah. you know for uh, for encouragement or whatever. Mm. Um, you know, so sometimes if I got, um, uh, yeah, so so yeah, but it but I know that I can I can share it with her. She doesn't think I'm mad. Uh, <laughs> you know, like like the the glitter thing. Like, you know, I, I, you know, I shared, a, you know, shared that with her and I was going like, you know, do you see it? You know, am I going mad? And, you know, she was the one who said, well, you know, like, it does it matter. Yeah. And, uh, you know, which was, which was really encouraging. So, um, yeah. And, and, you know, so, sometimes if I see an angel and, you know, it's, it's like, uh, like I saw the other day in the sky and it's like, uh, I'm thinking, you know, the, like, is there anybody, I, I'm standing there outside and I'm thinking, is there anybody else? Like you know, around here, who can see that thing in the sky? <laughs> and uh, you know, like, you know, is it just me? And uh, you know, I'm thinking, is is it real? Is it like you know? That's what I'm thinking. But I'm thinking, wow, I'm just you know. But in the midst of like you know, thinking that with my head, at the same time, I'm just thinking, wow, God, you know, like that is just it's so encouraging. And you know that, that mm. you'd show me this at this time, mm. you know, with with me, you know, thinking this or what, feeling this or whatever. That is just so encouraging. I'm so grateful to you that you, you're doing that. And really, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Uh, but I'm also thinking, you know, but but you know, somebody else is <laughs> out here walking their dog. You know, can they see that as well? <laughs> right, right. And, um, <laughs> so what happens but, uh, if you get together with other seers, like like Angela uh, Kem, I believe is her last name, um, or just yeah, a, that's a group? right. And do do you all see the same thing, or is it sometimes you do see the same things, or is it typical that God gives each seer kind of a different piece to look into, like? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so that that's that's a really interesting question. So, uh, so the uh, son of of uh, of somebody I know in in our church who uh, like she's she's very prophetic. Her son um, is very young. Uh, I don't know about six or seven. I think seven years old, something like that. Eight, and uh, and he's seeing, um, mm. and it's it's just like it's amazing, uh, and he's seeing stuff. And uh, and and he's sharing it with his his mum, and his mum's coming over to me and saying like, you know, he's seen this, and uh, you know, like it, it's that, <laughs> it's like, what do I do with it? It's like, you know, what's that mean? Mm. And um, and so you know, so 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 I'm able to then you know like uh, share with her her to be able to share with the son, but you know what that means? That's like you mm. know to encourage him in yeah. uh, in this stuff. Uh, he's he's young enough that he he isn't phased by it he's not bothered it's like it's normal mm. it's natural to him he's like you know he's not thinking about you know what will people think he's just he's seeing this stuff uh and just wondering what to do with it um and one particular meeting i was uh, i was in and and um uh, you know i'd, I'd seen like oh, this is probably going to raise other questions i'd seen like you know our angel of our church and then you know this this week like two two other angels appeared one on either side oh yay and uh, and i'm thinking wow you know that's that's really that's amazing that's like you know that was that is obviously like significant in some kind of way. Yeah. Um, but then after the meeting, like this this little boy, um, I heard him talking with his uh, his mum, and he was saying, "Boy, he said uh, this morning there was like there was three angels up at the, uh, at the front." Oh my and, uh, gosh! So precious. And, and so I I went up to you know up to the, them and just said you know I I'd seen the same thing, and mm -hmm. uh, you know it was just really encouraging, and so he was encouraged. Yeah. That you know, he'd seen like these three angels. I was encouraged. <laughs> <because> <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, well, I'm sure there's like you know, extra two just appeared this week. Um, but it's like, wow. And so, you know, for that, you know, how he saw them, what form they take, like, you know, he's he's you know, sometimes talks to his mum about that, and it's it can be you know, quite different and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but that, but you know, there is you know, it does coincide, uh, in some respects. So, you know, whether I see like, you know, the faces or the arms or the, you know, whatever, whatever the detail, level of detail or whatever, that in a sense, that's, that's not the important thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's actually what God's saying in the midst of that. Uh, you know, that's, that's the important thing. Are any of your own children seers? Uh, so I, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, um, yeah, I, uh, I do wonder about that. Uh, I'm thinking maybe my youngest uh, youngest boy uh, could potentially be. Um, so so I, I like you know I'm really um, 
Yeah, I, I think like you know he he sometimes will share things, and I think wow, that's 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 like a seeing kind of thing. Wow. And, uh, and I will always like encourage him. Um, and and what I what I want to do is is for them to feel that that it's like normal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that there's nothing like you know unusual about this. This is just it's another way that God speaks. Uh, and and to just give them that kind of like acceptance and things. So, you know, he he would freely you know talk to me about uh, about things that you know he would. Uh, see or feel mm-hmm. uh, yeah. so and, and it's the same with that you know that little boy in our uh, in our church as well you know I, I want him to to just keep going with it as much as he can uh, you know eventually they'll, they'll get to an age where people are just going to like you know toss it aside and uh, you know hearing other people's testimonies uh, but maybe when they were seen when they were younger and then they stopped uh, you know I, I don't want that to happen for uh, for like the younger younger kids I want them to, you know, carry on and not feel that, you know, it's an unusual thing and, and a childish thing and not just cast it aside, right. uh, but just to encourage them in that and, and to keep, keep going in it. So uh, you might not have an answer for this, but why do some people <laughs> stop seeing? And along with that, is is seeing something that every Christian then has access to? Or is it, yeah, wh- how how do you see that? What is your experience with that? What is your opinion on on? the realm of seers in that sense yeah yeah well i, I still uh believe and I, i've mentioned this before it, it's like it's a faith gift mm. uh, and so if if you stop believing that what you're seeing is from god then mm. you'll stop seeing right. oh, i think okay. i think it's as simple as that uh that makes so sense. um so yeah I, I i think really that 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 is it and then thinking about um i think it's elijah or elijah Probably Elisha, I think, um, when you know it, there was that thing about you know he's talking about all the chariots that are around them and his mm-hmm. little uh, helper is going like you know I, d- I don't know what you're talking about and uh, and he's, he you know Elisha says open open his eyes Lord that he can see and then he sees the fiery fiery chariots and stuff like that right so clearly like you know there is there's a spiritual dimension to that or whatever it seems to be you know a gift that you know can be opened by by God in some kind of way. Mm. Um, you know, when you look in the Old Testament, there are, you know, there are prophets and there are seers. Yeah. And they mm-hmm. seem to be two different kind of uh, categories, but all grouped together within the, within the prophetic. Uh, so it's, uh, for me, I, I think it's just a different way uh, that God speaks to people. Mm. You know, sometimes it's audibly, sometimes it's, it's visually, which is like the, uh, that's the seer gift. So, so I don't see it as being like, you know, any more special or any different to, to one of the other ways that, that God speaks. Uh, it's just knowing his language uh, yeah. for you, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and just just working with that really. So uh, this is a speculative question. So forgive me for asking you a speculative <laughs> question. But that story of um, Eli- it was it Elisha or Elijah? I'm- I believe it's Elisha. Yeah, one of them. <laughs> one of, okay, I, Elisha and his servant and praying for his eyes to be open. In your opinion and thought process and what you've seen, was that intended to be something where his eyes were intended to stay open? To where he, he, because my understanding of the story is that he was actually in training, right? Like Elisha, Elijah mm. trained Elisha, that this man was supposed yeah. to be in training for that position. And so was yes. that prayer of open his eyes intended to be this thing where from then on he would begin to be trained in seeing what was happening in the heavenlies? Or was it a for that moment? And I know that's a speculative question. The Bible doesn't comment on it, but. In your opinion, as a seer, what do you what do you think of that? <laughs> um, it, it'd be cool, wouldn't it, if if um, uh, you know you could pray that, and then people's eyes would be would be opened, and that that's all it would take. Mm. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, but it, I suppose because there's another speculative question, which is about um, uh, you know the uh, Jesus and Nathaniel. And, uh, you know, uh, Jesus says, you know, you're going to see heaven opened and, and the angels ascending and descending on, on the Son of Man. And mm-hmm. it's like, you know, well, so when did that happen? Right. Was that like, you know, was that like after that point in time? Or, you know, was it just a one-off event that he actually saw? Because it's not recorded. Right. Or yeah. is that like, is that the perpetual uh, place for each of us to walk in? Mm. Do we walk underneath an open heaven? Do we have the right to, to then, you know, see Jesus? With the mm. angels ascending and descending on on uh, on his head, mm. uh, you know, it, it, that's that's an interesting uh, kind of question. Um, 
Because one, one of the, one of the recommended fast. books that you <laughs> have put at the end, I think it's of your first book, um, Gary Oates, Open My Eyes, Lord. And he talks about seeing angels and things like that. And I, I believe it's that same kind of prayer where he's for himself and for others praying that God would open their eyes to begin to see though yes. at least at least angels yeah. if not more <laughs> yeah 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 definitely and so um you know one, one of the things that i have um you know uh, done for people if if they've asked uh is like you know laying hands on them you know for an impartation uh in terms of you know uh, god opening their eyes uh of the uh, few people <laughs> that i've done that for uh you know one of them uh, it actually happened, uh, um, so for me, like you know, that's that's encouraging. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But also, you know, th- th- it shows that you know it is it is something that can be imparted. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and uh, you just talk about you know Paul talks about you know that I might come and impart to you some some kind of gift. Yeah. And I feel like you know the seeing is is like that's another gift that that can be uh, can be imparted. So I'm in no way you know guaranteeing that you know if I lay hands on people. It will happen, <laughs> but it's just that I I've seen it happen, you know, yeah. and so you know that that's encouraged me enough uh, to at, at least you know pursue that for people if they want it. Yeah. But uh, I wouldn't like you know impose it on anybody who wasn't looking for it. Um, hmm. So yeah, yeah, they'd have to be hungry for it, I think. Yeah. So it sounds like a lot of your experiences with um, seeing and the prophetic have been related to the prophetic, whether it's for spiritual warfare or for edification of the body. <laughs> Where has it taken you? Has it, um, I, I know that in more recent years, um, as you gotten into like Randy Clark, um, hey. and I'm sure there's a long list of guys there that I, I just don't know about, um, have moved towards, uh, healing and, uh, I, I'm not sure. Uh, that's what my part of my question is. Where has it taken you, and how has seeing come along as you ventured into these other expressions? Yes. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's an interesting question. I um, so so when I had a friend of mine who uh, this was just a few years ago who uh, I, I shared finally was brave enough to share uh, with him. You know, one of my uh, my stories uh, and. Uh, and he said, you know, it, it sounds sounds to me like you're a seer. And uh, that was the first time I'd, I'd heard that phrase. Uh, I'd never heard it before. Uh, and so he said, yeah, there's this guy called Jonathan Walton, I think it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he's done this audio course. He's got a book as well. You know, you should maybe uh, check that out. So I listened to the uh, to the audio. I bought his book. Uh, he talked about another guy, Gary Oates. Uh, so I bought his book as well. And both of these people uh, have been on a Randy Clark trip, um, and so I thought, well, you know, like that Randy Clark seemed to be the key for these two people moving into the sea as well realm kind of thing. Uh, maybe I should check out Randy Clark. I'd never heard of him before, um, and so as it turned out, he, Randy Clark was actually going to be in in uh, Bath, uh, and it was like a church conference. It was about the Bath Church Conference, and he was seen to be there at the end. And I couldn't understand why he'd be in Bath, uh, <laughs> but it t- it turned out his daughter was actually had been studying in, in Bath University, and and that's why oh. uh, he was there. So it was it wasn't like there weren't many people there. It was literally just a church conference with him tacked on the end. Um, and oh, so, uh, <laughs> so I went along just thinking, I want to find out more about the seers. You know, this guy seems to be a key for these other people, like, you know, doing the seer thing. I, I had no idea that, you know, Randy Clark was a healing guy. I wasn't like healing wasn't, I wasn't interested in healing. I was just interested in the prophetic seeing mm-hmm. and, yeah. uh, you know, like single minded and that kind of thing. Mm. Um, but then, uh, like God just snuck up on me and, uh, and Randy Clark laid hands on me. Wow. Uh, I have never been so powerfully touched by God. I started shaking. It's like, wow, this is, uh, and that was an impartation for healing. Mm-hmm. And, wow. and uh, so afterwards I, I prayed, uh, I prayed for a lady and uh, and she just got healed instantly. I, I'd never seen, I'd never seen anything like that before. She was like, it was a leg. And um, it's like, I don't know who was like, you know, moving more blown away, like her or me, but it was like, <laughs> wow. This is just like this is amazing, and uh, so so I thought, well, you know, I'll I'll start to pursue this this healing thing. You know, it seems to be in the Bible as well. It's another one of them gifts, 
and then you know i'll let <laughs> it's in there it's got to be good it's the, it's right in there so uh so yeah so randy clark and healing and um and, and just like you know pursued that that's when i then you know came across uh james maloney mm-hmm. uh you know who, who combines like the the seeing uh, gift with the healing gift as well and i thought what a cool combination yeah uh, that that'd be uh you know if, if it could move like that that would be just uh that'd be just amazing i did the randy clark um course with you guys yeah and, that was exciting uh, you know, that was uh, <laughs> that was that was really exciting and 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 seeing uh you know working out with the seeing and the he- healing I, i'd uh you know we were doing these exercises and and one of them was to uh you know to, uh, do the wisdom knowledge for people or whatever and i i'd seen like uh some lungs a pair of lungs over this uh, this lady and uh i thought wow maybe that's that's a healing thing and uh so i went over to her and i said you know like if have you got problems with that uh, with like your breathing and uh and stuff and uh and she said yeah 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 i have so i uh you know i pray, prayed for her and uh and she you know the problems that she had with the breathing and things just disappeared wow. and it's Whoa. like wow that's just like you know that's the seeing that's the healing that's like whoa that's oh, it's uh, a that's combination really good. of all of them together <laughs> so it, it was a very natural meshing of those two for you it, it didn't yeah, take yeah, much yeah. to bridge them no no so so i thought well that's uh, that's really good and um and you know because god speaks to me in in uh, in dreams as well as in uh, you know like visions and and with the seeing thing so i uh, i went along to another randy clark meeting and before the night before I had a dream, and in this dream, um, Randy Clark was in a healing meeting, wow. and he was giving out words of knowledge. And he, he said, uh, "There's a lady here called I think it's Martina or something like that. Uh, she's got pain in her shoulder, I think pain in the back or whatever. Um, God wants to heal you." And uh, and I woke up, and uh, I thought maybe that's a word of knowledge. And uh, so I wrote it down, you know, like the name and then the conditions and things like that. I went along to the uh, the evening meeting and they gave an opportunity for people to come up and, uh, and give words of knowledge. So so I gave it. I said, you know, Mark, I gave the name, I gave the uh, the ailments. Uh, you know, if, if that's you, then come up and I'll pray for you. And um, and there was somebody in that meeting with that name, with those wow. conditions who wow. came up to me afterwards. And uh, and so I laid hands on her, prayed for her, and uh, and she got healed. It turned Yay. out that she'd had uh, like pain, pain in her back from... Uh, when she'd given birth to her last uh, her last child, and she wasn't a young lady, so she'd <laughs> she'd obviously had that pain for a long time, and and she was just like the pain's gone, and leaning wow. over, and it just like disappeared. Oh, that's beautiful. So I beautiful. thought, wow, that's so that's like you know that's the dreams, mm. and uh, you know God can can speak through that with healing as well. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't think it's just for the prophetic, and uh, and you know God's been just like opening my eyes really to uh, to that and how. It's just it's just the way that he's speaking to me. It's his way of communication to me. Mm. You know the dreams and the scene and stuff. But it, his desire is the same. He wants to heal people. Mm. He wants to encourage people. Uh, he wants to do all the things. And uh, you know, it's just the way he does it through me. Beautiful. So I I have this question for you. It just kind of dropped into my <laughs> head. So uh, maybe maybe it's just myself or maybe God's leading in here. Just how do you hear God's voice? So. We've been talking about the things you see. <laughs> what, do you also hear his voice? Do you do you hear him audibly? Do you do you get the still small voice? What does that look like for you? Or I guess sound so, like. <laughs> <laughs> so it it's uh, it's really interesting. Uh, you know the, the different ways that uh, that God can speak. Um, you know I, f- I find quite often he'll he'll speak to me through, like you know the Bible. Uh, you know before before I sit sit down and start to read it i'll ask specifically ask the holy spirit to speak to me through his word uh, you know he, he's the author and uh you know he knew, he knows what he meant when he when he got people to write it so <laughs> yes. i just say you know what what is it that you're saying to me uh you know speak to me through your words so so for me it's like i feel the presence of god when when i've got my bible open and i'm with him yeah. um you know so so you know he'll speak to me through uh through through the written word through the bible um, you know, sometimes God will uh, speak to me through other people. You know, not not even Christians. Mm. Uh, something they say will just like, wow, that's that's like that's God speaking to me. I know that's God speaking to me. Wow. Uh, you know, he's speak he's speaking straight to my heart. So I've learned not to limit God um, to the channel that He uses to speak to me. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter how unholy or non-Christian or whatever. 
that that person is, God can still use them to speak to me, mm. and I need to be ready to to hear Him speak uh, in whatever you know way that that He chooses to uh, to do. Um, you know, I've had I've mentioned this before, like dreams where God spoke to me in dreams. First time I I uh, wrote down a prophetic word, I had it as a as a dream. I, I in a dream I, I was sitting at a table and there was a blank sheet of paper in front of me. And then I just start writing like these these words on this piece of paper, and um, and so when I woke up, I thought, okay, I think I think that's that's like God speaking. So I started to write the first line that I'd seen in the dream, and then as I did that, like the rest of it came, um, and that was the, that. So that was like it was the, the dream was the starting point, but actually he was like he was uh, speaking to me as I'm writing it down. So. Um, yeah, so that that's kind of like it's almost like a hearing thing when when mm. you know when it's taking that form. Um, you know, sometimes God will uh, speak to me through uh, through pictures. Uh, you know, I might look at something and, and just think, "Wow, that's I know that's a picture for uh, you know for the, a particular person." Yeah. Um, so that's like a visual clue for uh, you know for it. Uh, so we've had the Bible, we've had like dreams. Uh, you know, sometimes it, it's a vision, and that's like well. There's, there's no argument about that. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, so, you know, in the past, I, um, you know, like God will just, just, you know, maybe prompt me. And it's like, it's an inner voice, uh, you know, the prompting, like, you know, ask them about this or ask them about that. Uh, you know, I want to say this to them or whatever. So it's like, you know, he's 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 chatting in, inside me. Uh, you know, it's, it's his voice. And I've I've learned to know his voice from you know reading his word, uh, learning the way that he speaks. I uh, I memorize a lot of scripture uh, because I find that that's a great way of getting it inside me. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think like in your first podcast, you were talking about the two verses. I think that you know. <laughs> <Eric>. <laughs> he actually so could learned be room a lot for, more you know, than like... that. But <laughs> we, we've, as a family, so be recently been, we've been memorizing uh, whole chapters, and so recently we've gotten through Psalms twenty three with our daughters, and we're on to Proverbs three at the moment. Yeah, so it's been a fun yeah. family journey. <laughs> So it's good. So the good thing about it, like the word of God is is that you know that's how God speaks. So yeah. if you get it inside you, then you already have a language, you know, that that He uses. So Ew. so God can just draw that out, and and you can like prophesy just speaking out what what He's already put in your heart. Uh, so you know, I, I found that you know memorizing, meditating on Scripture is actually that's a great way, um, and that God speaks to you, you know, as you're as you're chewing on that chewing on that word. Mm -hmm. um, I, I uh, so another way is is like smells uh I, I yeah if yes this smells mm -hmm. and so i was in a meeting one time and, and um i was sitting next to a guy who's like a secret smoker so uh like he, he, <laughs> like you know every every break he just thought he, like, it was disappear. secret though right <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, he thought it was secret he'd disappear come back and like he'd be reeking of smoke yeah so you just you knew what you know what he was doing and uh, but it meant that you know through this conference, it, like there's, it was like I was sitting next to smoke. All I could smell was like smoke. <laughs> uh, so, but at, at, at this particular point in the in the conference, I started to um, I started to smell uh, like apples. I think it was, and I was thinking, nice. where's that coming from? It's obviously like it's not this guy next to me, right? But I can really like you know smell apples. And um, and the the guy at the front, it was actually Julian Adams again. Uh, the guy at the front said, uh, there are some people here. Who at the moment are smelling like uh, apples? Nice, and uh, it's it's like you know God God wants to uh, God wants to do something in people's lives. He wants to Beautiful. make them more fruitful and uh, and things like that. And um, I was thinking, wow, like you know, smell even smell can be a, like a, a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. I uh, there's one time I was in another meeting and uh, I smelled fire, and uh, and I was thinking. Oh no! Like you know, we need to get ready to evacuate. It's yeah. like you know, let's find the fire alarm and set it off. And uh, and again, the guy at the front said, uh, and this was Julian Adams again in another meeting. And he said, uh, "There are some people here who are smelling fire at the moment, and uh, and you need to know that like it's it's a sign of revival. Wow, that God wants beautiful. to bring revival, wow. and what you're smelling is like you know, it's the the smell of revival. God's going to bring it. That's beautiful. So I was thinking, wow, like God can God can talk through uh, even through smelling. Uh, so yeah, I'm just thinking of any other senses. <laughs> That's probably yeah. the ones that that he's spoken to me through anyway. Wow. But yeah, 
yeah, God can speak in many ways. Um, and there was a particular time where, where God said uh, to me, I want, uh, and it was actually, it was part of Julian Adams's uh, word to me was that, you know, God's going to shift you from hearing to seeing. Wow. Um, yeah. and, uh, and, and I realized that that was for the prophetic, that actually, you know, that I'd mainly been, you know, like hearing God's words and then speaking it out. But actually, okay. God wanted to, you know, to speak to me through seeing, and then speak, uh, speak it out. Uh, so, yeah. So that is, I think, one of the a party question was, you know, is it phases or whatever? Uh, but that, yeah, for me, that's that's been kind of like a transition. Wow, that's incredible. So you have you, you're more of a lay minister in that sense. You you have a profession. Um, you have a real job. You have a real job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're not you're not a hundred percent full time into ministry. No. Um, how has that looked with non believers at either at your workplace or just on the street? Do you often find yourself seeing things in their lives and God using that for evangelistic purposes, or does it tend to be more for um, in the church for edification of other believers? So that's that's a really good question. I, I uh, so um, there's I'd been like witnessing to somebody in uh, in work over over you know a particular period of time, and um, and I, I'd uh, you know these opportunities come come up. I'd like you know to talk about Jesus or wherever, and and they were very anti uh, Christian, very adamant that you know uh, it was bad and not not good, and and uh, and I, I'd been you know like praying and and just saying like. God, what can I do? I I, uh, I seem to have come to the end of the argument. I can't, you know. It doesn't matter. You know, I don't need more opportunities to, to like, you know, talk about Jesus. Uh, I'm just, I'm getting nowhere, and and I, I really want to, you know, see them become a Christian, but I don't know what to say. Mm. Um, and then uh, God gave me a, a prophetic word for them, and um, so, and I'm thinking, how, how am I going to share this? Because this is somebody in my office. Uh, I, uh, you know, I'm going to see them like the next day, right? And uh, you know, so if I get it wrong, then you know, <laughs> it's not it's not going to be that great. Um, I, I don't want to misrepresent Jesus, uh, but uh, you know, I don't want to uh, wimp out of this either. I, I do want to, you know, kind of give it. So I wrote it down on a piece piece of paper, and uh, and I went to it the next day, and I, I'm just praying, and I'm saying like, Lord, if you want me to give this, if you really, really want me to give this, <laughs> then uh, like. <laughs> Make it really obvious, you know, and uh, you know, thinking that maybe that wouldn't happen, and uh, <laughs> but uh, but so the opportunity came, and uh, so I thought I've, I've got to give it, and I, I put it in a little uh, envelope, and I just said, look, you know, I'm a Christian, uh, you know, I believe that uh, that you know God speaks to us, and I believe that you know that God's actually spoken to me, and He's given me something that I believe is for you. Um, mm -hmm. I'd like you to to read this uh, and just you know see see what you think, see what you feel. Uh, and so I gave them the uh, envelope, and I just quickly rushed out the uh, the door, and, uh, <laughs> and I went, I went to the uh, went to the bathroom, and uh, I'm like in there, like praying, like Lord, 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 you know, please speak to them, and uh, you know, please let it be from you. And <laughs> you went to the throne and, uh, room to intercede on his behalf. I went to the throne room. Yeah, that's right, absolutely. So, uh, so anyway, I, I come back to the uh, to the office, and um, there's a, a girl uh, like standing outside the door. And uh, she looks really concerned. I mean, she's she's somebody that I I, I worked with, and I, I knew it, that she was a Christian. And uh, and she said, "What have you done?" And I, I said, "What do you mean?" <laughs> oh no! I said like this this girl, she's just in tears, like she's just sobbing. She said, uh, and I'm going, "Oh no, I've got it, like majorly wrong." <laughs> oh no! So uh, so so I said, oh, "Okay, well I'll I'll, uh, I'll come back later," <laughs> and, and uh, just like disappeared. Anyway, uh, it turns out. Uh, that weekend, she uh, she gave her life to Jesus. Wow! Um, there were things she said. There were things in that word that only God would know. Uh, she'd never shared them with anyone, uh, and that just convinced her that God was real. and And she gave her life to Jesus. Oh, hooray! And, uh, wow! I was just thinking, wow. You know, if if I hadn't like been brave and and taken that step, uh, then she would have you know never become a Christian. And mm. uh, and so you know, I think well, if that. If that's all it takes is just you know me getting over that embarrassment factor, uh, then I should I should take the risk because uh, there is you know there is fruit on the other side. Mm. Uh, so I don't believe that the prophetic's just you know for for Christians and not for non-Christians. I believe you just have to you know put it in the right kind of language, 
that you know that they can relate to um and just you know clarify yeah. it for them really wow that's really powerful um would you say that you do that you are able to do things like that often in your um in your line of work or on the street like do you feel called to i guess street evangelism if you will or and so uh, that is an interesting thing I, I would say the actual opportunities to uh you know to share in work aren't actually that many and uh, i've you know had opportunities as well to uh, to pray for people in work uh for healing uh again you know putting that in the right context uh, I, I haven't had a, a negative experience from doing that. Um, I prayed for one of my bosses that I, I worked at, and, and uh, he was so touched that he gave me a hug afterwards. And well, this is like, this isn't work. It's like you, know, you don't, you just don't do that sort of thing. Right. But uh, but he was so touched that you know that that I was concerned enough to pray for him. Actually, you know, there and then. Mm. Uh, so you know that that was uh, you know that that was quite encouraging. But uh, so I've tried. Uh, like treasure hunting and uh, and things, uh, you know, didn't particularly do particularly well uh, <laughs> with those uh, sort of opportunities. I didn't seem to, you know, for me that that didn't seem to be, uh, you know, a, a particular thing that worked. Something that I have been uh, doing recently is is Spirit Cafe. Uh, I don't know; if it's probably just a thing here in the UK. Uh, but basically, it's it's uh, it's it. They run like a cafe where people are uh, uh, people can come along. Uh, and they have like these these treatments that are offered, uh, things like uh, you know it's it's healing, it's prophecy, mm. it's uh, you know d- different things like that. But they they use words that you know people would you know easily relate to. So so call yeah. like prophecy, spiritual readings, or you know that that sort of thing, uh, which I appreciate is you know for some people uh, controversial, but it's the language that that you know people understand. Right. Um, yeah, so that's that's. Yeah, that's right. So that's been a really interesting uh, thing uh, where, uh, you know, prophesying over non-Christians, people that you don't know, you can't, you know, you can't use your, the standard Christian jargon. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they're, they're quite ruthless yes. in telling you that you're wrong, <laughs> 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 that you've missed it. So you've got to like, you know, just pick yourself up and uh, and go for it again. Uh, but it's, it, it's just at the same time, you know, it just seen, you know, God uh, do like amazing things. There was uh, so just um, one that I did the last last time I did did this uh, with a group of people. So a uh, person sits down and uh, and say, you know, can you uh, you know we'll, we'll just pray and ask Jesus just for a few minutes, and uh, and so I I, uh, I got got something about uh, I, I saw her with uh, like a necklace around her, her neck and and um, she got like the uh, the names of uh, of people that she loved. Uh, um, we're just on this necklace. Uh, somebody else had got like a, a a real sense of that she just recently suffered a loss, um, and uh, and so uh, you know at the end of that we say you know does any of that uh, like mean anything uh, to you? Uh, and she said, um, well, uh, oh yeah. And the other guy, the other guy got um, they got <laughs> that you were at the door and that you needed to uh, to open it. So that those are like the three things we got. So then someone said, you know, does that mean anything to you? And the lady said, uh, said, well, actually, um, she said, my daughter died um, wow. about a year ago, and uh, and after she died, I uh, I got her her ashes made into like a bracelet, a wow. necklace, and I wear like her her, her ashes on my uh, on my neck. Uh, so so you know that bereavement thing, yeah, that's definitely from God, and the you know necklace thing, yeah, that's definitely from God. So then the uh, the, the person leading uh, said, "Well, you know, then that's why the third thing is is for you, you know, about being at the door, and that uh, you know that that God wants you to open it." There's right. a, a bit in scripture which talks about you know revelation and you know being at the door and opening it. Would you like to open the door and invite Jesus into into your life? And uh, the lady said, "Yeah, I would." Yeah. And uh, awesome. so just led her there in a in a prayer of salvation, and you just think like that that was just that was so straightforward mm-hmm. it's like you know so so simple to do yeah but it was god who set that up and uh you know he arranged all of that and there was the three of us who, who shared things but actually you know god's like you know was speaking to that that person and uh and and that's just like one of many stories of of you know people who just come in and and uh, they're just looking for you know answers 
and he's just able to to use the prophetic, but in a in an evangelistic kind of context. Right. Yeah. And so those are really exciting times. Well, yeah. I don't know how long. Oh wow! Look at the time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what what does the fu- future hold for for you, Ian? Where what's uh, what's on your horizon? Yeah. So, so that's that's an interesting uh, question. I I, uh, I don't know. So, I, I, I'm just following the same rule that I've followed all the way along. Just be obedient to like the you know what you show me. Uh, take the next steps. Um, you know, I, I uh, so I've started to be invited to. Uh, different churches to, uh, you know, like uh, do a little preach or you know share share a message or whatever, and then uh, give words at the at the end to uh, you know to people. Uh, so that's that's been uh, that's been really good and encouraging. You're encouraging for the the churches that that I go to. Uh, quite often, God will give me you know things for the for the church leadership as well. Wow. Um, so you know that's that's been uh, been encouraging. Um, I'd like to say, you know, my books has taken off and I'm selling millions and, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's not, uh, you know, that's not been happening, but that's, that's okay. Cause you know, that's, that's not why I wrote them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so yeah, I'm just you know looking for, uh, for opportunities, uh, you know, lay hands on the, on people. If they ask me to do that, I want to see, you know, more people stepping into the prophetic. Yeah. Uh, I want to see, see as kind of, you know, recognized. Uh, within the church and and not being uh, not feeling that they have to kind of like hide the gift, yeah. Uh, but that you know that there is a place for it in the body of Christ, yes. Uh, and that you know we can play an important role, and uh, so you know feel that's an important message to to be bringing to the church. Uh, so. Yeah. Well, wow, that's so great. Well, if you have a little bit of time, we would love to ask you to pray for us and. Mm-hmm. I don't know yeah. how well impartations work over the internet, but it's the Holy <laughs> Spirit, so I think it probably works pretty well. I think it'll so. work great. <laughs> I'm very expectant. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, so I think about you know, so for me, like no one laid hands on me, you know, for, for the gift God just you know gave it and yeah. and uh, and things. So so I'm conscious that you know, even though you know I can't lay hands on you or you know if anyone's listening to this, you know, th- th- and stuff. I can't lay hands on uh, on their minds, but I can, you know, pray a prayer, uh, which is what I'd like to do now, if, if that's okay. Yes, we please. That, that, please. That God will uh, you know, do something. So, Father, I, I just thank you for uh, uh, for your gifts. I thank you yeah. that that uh, you're a God who loves to communicate. Uh, that you know that, that seeing the prophetic that's that's just one of the ways that that you can communicate to to the body, uh, but also to to non Christians as well. And so I want to pray uh, that you would release more, uh, you know, the, the seeing um, uh, part of the, uh, of the gifts of the Spirit. I pray for, uh, you know, for Rachel and Eric, I pray that you just open their eyes uh, to, uh, to to see more. Uh, you know, it, if there is no more, then it would be, they would see things uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, feel them. I pray that you speak to them in dreams, uh, speak to them in visions, uh, speak to them in, you know, lots of different ways that they would see angels, that they would see, you know, a- amazing things that you would speak to them in, the, in great ways. And, um, yeah, I-, I just thank you for them. They're just such an encouragement to uh, to me, both of them. And, uh, you know, I-, I pray that you just continue to-, to use them, bless them, grow them more, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Wow. And uh, before you go, how can we pray for you? <laughs> um what will be my prayer? Uh, I, I'm, you know, always looking to grow more. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that God would use me more, I suppose, would be, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I'm i open to, you know, more of the weird and wacky. Uh, you know, <laughs> I can't have, can't have enough of that. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, d- just more. Uh, yeah. But it's, it's not just for me. It's, you know, I want to be able to, uh, you know, to touch uh, people's lives, you know, with the prophetic and, and, and the, seeing more uh so you know christians non-christians that he would just use me so i i I had immediately just saw this picture of you on a it it's not like an open field but it's this big long expanse this open space and this winding uh dirt path through it and the sky is dramatic i think is the best way to describe it it's just there's (laughs) 
there's clouds, there's light there. It just, it's not ominous. It's not darker. It's, but it's just dramatic. And it just also the word that I, I, I heard with that was wonder. And I just, I feel like there's that mm-hmm. journey of wonder that you've been on. And I think that's just the rest of your life is a journey of wonder. That's why it's this mm-hmm. expanse that just keeps going. So father, I just, mm-hmm. I bless the journey of wonder that you have Ian on. And even mm-hmm. as he said, he can't get enough <laughs> of the weird. We just, we just <laughs> ask that you would just continue to open uh, his eyes, the spiritual eyes, even more to encounter mm-hmm. you in new and different ways. So that he can mm-hmm. continue to be a, um, a conduit for the rest of the church to, mm-hmm. to those experiences, to knowing that that is part of who you are and to being able to yeah. translate those things. I think that's just so amazing about these books is that they just share a journey that Ian's been mm-hmm. on with the world. And it just, mm-hmm. yeah, we look forward to that third book that <laughs> it just goes more and more <laughs> into this journey of wonder as you open more and more yeah. things up for him, Lord. Yeah. 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 I just, yeah. um, I feel like God kind of wants to give you, maybe he's already given you this name or he, <laughs> your name of faithful. Like it's his name, yeah. right? He is faithful. Yeah. And I think that yeah. some, that is a part of him that you reflect is just being faithful. And, um, no matter what season of life you have gone through, you have just continued to be faithful to him and you have continued to yeah. work out your faith in fear and trembling. And I just, yeah. I, I bless that in you. That is so, yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. And um, I just kind of feel like it has such a huge reward, like just being able to be faithful in the little. Mm-hmm. It 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 its reward is so much greater than anything that you can see right now. And so, mm-hmm. Father, I just I thank you so much for Ian's faithfulness to you and his faithfulness and the things that you've called him to. And I just thank you that you are that you are just bringing about so much fruit from his faithfulness and that he's going to be able to mm-hmm. see it in the land of the living. And Father, yeah. I just, I bless his mm-hmm. family with this heritage mm-hmm. of faithfulness. Yes. Father, that yeah. it's not something that's going to stop here, but Father, that it will continue down through the generations. And yeah. I just thank you, Father, thank for you. your hand on their family. I thank you that... Mm-hmm. It's such a loving hand <laughs> and that nothing can <laughs> separate this family from your love. And Father, I just yeah. thank you so much for the protection that you have over them and over mm-hmm. um, the different giftings that you've given mm-hmm. to each of his children and to his wife and to Ian himself. Father, it's yeah. so beautiful. It's just a tapestry of your love. <laughs> you just bring yeah. all of the different parts of you together in this one family, and I just bless that. Yeah. And Father, I thank yeah. you that, that Ian is a start of something in his community that yeah. is going to take off. Father, um, okay. that his ability to stand, his ability to be a pillar where he is, that it's going to... The prayers of a righteous man availeth much, Father, yeah. just that, that yeah. there is this huge thing that is coming, and it is because Ian has stood, and he has stood firm, and we just bless that, yeah. and we just say more, Lord. <laughs> yes. We're so yeah. excited. Yeah. Um, yeah, in Jesus' name, yeah. we just bless you, Ian. Yeah. Okay. And oh my goodness, thank you so much for spending yeah, this time we... with us. <laughs> it's so exciting. No, so, yeah, I, it's been I, fun. Yeah, I have one more question. <laughs> Only one more. Only one I more. I have a million. <laughs> when can we do this again? <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. I was just thinking about, you know, all the stories that I didn't share. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> well, well, let's try to find a time and um, do it again. I mean, we'll try not to overwhelm your schedule, but I want to do this again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now it's been fun. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Wow. Thank you so much, Ian. Really appreciate yes. it. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's been great to meet you. Yeah, yes. so, uh, <laughs> it's <yeah>. so exciting. <laughs> wow. Cool. All right. Thanks very much. Yeah, bless you. Thanks for listening to this episode of Passionate Pursuit. 
We hope you enjoyed our conversation today and we would like to welcome you back for next time. Please like, share, and subscribe if you'd like more.